Yes, uh, thank you, um, Chair. Um, <coughs> Andrew, uh, you've given us a, a verbal update. Can I now refer to the written evidence you've uh, sent in to the committee, uh, and uh, particularly uh, one or two aspect, uh, aspects? Uh, you say that um, the CRL contracts include provisions on the London Living Wage and Trade Union membership. Can you tell us how many companies working on Crossrail recognise a trade union and uh, how many people on Crossrail projects are also trade union members? I can talk um, about the works information and about what we are trying to deliver in terms of environments for employment, for the relationships of trade unions. Um, our works information recognises that our contract, so let me just sort of be, be clear, the employers, the employees um, are employees of our first year suppliers or, or their, their, their subcontracts. Um, in our works information we clearly state that the um, London Living Allowance should be recognised. We clearly state that we expect um, pay rates to be in line with recognised working uh, national work board agreements. We clearly state that the um, ethos of direct employment uh, is the one that Crossrail wants to follow. And we clearly state that um, a constructive relationship with our trade union partners, um, the Unite Union, GMB and UCAT are the three that really cover the, the scope of this ground. Now, I add um, on a quarterly basis my team <coughs> to talk about the strategic direction of Crossrail. We share a lot of information around our health and safety, around our skills, around our training, around our employment, uh, and we are very much encouraging a very strong relationship at that level. We are also encouraging open and honest communications, um, environments where um, uh, all of the construction workers are free to join the unions of their choice, in whichever way they can, and open and free di dialogue that you'd expect of um, uh, construction investment of this size and scale. Andrew, I hear what you're saying, but that isn't, isn't quite an answer to my question. How many of the, your, of the tier one contractors actually recognise trade unions? Uh, I've got no reason to believe that any do not recognise trade oh, unions. For example, BFK in Paddington. Um, BFK recognise trade unions, um, and I've got no reason to doubt that any of our first tier suppliers don't have. You know, local relationship with trade unions uh, is a very, very important aspect of how we need to deliver and procure. They are an important group of stakeholders for us. So um, the, there are none of my first tier suppliers that do not wish to um, create constructive relationships with the trade unions. Okay, you've said that. I mean, does Crossrail uh, agree? that contractors found uh, participating in blacklisting should be excluded from the project? Well, uh, I would ask you, if you haven't already, to read the headlines of the construction press this morning where the chief executive of Crossrail absolutely <coughs> slams um, indefensible, shameful, the behaviour of the industry back in 2008, 2009. I have made it very clear where I stand, very clear where our works information stand, very clear how I expect my first year suppliers to behave, and the whole of Crossrail. There is no evidence of blacklisting on Crossrail that I have written assurance from all of my suppliers now that they are not part of, they have not behaved in that way, and Crossrail is completely distant from some activities that happened in this industry in 2009. That our works information includes the 1999 employment regulations with the 2010 blacklisting regulations. Um, they quite clearly understand the severity of an offence in breach of those regulations uh, and have written assurance from each of my chief executives that none of the first tier suppliers have been involved or have been on, on Crossrail. So you, are, you have been monitoring this whole issue right from the outset of this contract. Is that what you're saying? Well, Monitoring. We, we have an assurance program, an audit program, that will look in 2013 at the activities around how our supply chain are procuring um, construction workers. Um, we have assurances that this behaviour hasn't happened and we've had absolutely no evidence of blacklisting um, on Crossrail. Okay. Um, I'll come back to the written evidence, and you've repeated it verbally as well. You say no allegations have been made about blacklisting uh, by contractors working on, on 
uh, the Crossrail project. No, but didn't it, no, no allegations, no. Murad. He said there is no evidence. There's lots of allegations, but okay, no well, evidence. Okay, well, that's what you've written in the written response. I'm just quoting from what you've put in. Uh, and you've mentioned the union um, allegations, but what, what's uh, about the allegations if they come from individuals like Frank Morris? Well, I think you will be aware as I am that Frank Morris um, is currently subject to a tribunal. It would be irresponsible of me to talk about the detail of that because I wouldn't want to um, in any way um, you know, infringe upon the, the freedom of that. Yeah, um, I can't get into that, Murad, today. Okay, well, I just, just thought so it's worth uh, highlighting the individual that finds himself in the thick of it and uh, as I, those of us locally around Paddington see him regularly um, yeah, looking for employment. But anyway, Murad. continue, Andrew. Will you, will you say something? Well, as I said, it would be inappropriate for me to comment on, on something that's a subject from a tribunal. Okay. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, actually, the, the Assembly passed a motion on this very matter. Uh, John Biggs and uh, Tom Copley seconded it uh, to, for the Mayor to provide evidence uh, of steps taken to ensure uh, blacklisting was, wasn't and is not being used in the hiring and uh, firing of pro people involved in the project. Have you already provided the Mayor with evidence on this front? Uh, well, we have provided um, the same dialogue that I provided with you today in that the assurances that we've got from our supply chain, um, both verbal and written, um, that the fact that there is no evidence of blacklisting, the fact that everyone is absolutely clear yes. about the severity of any action surrounding blacklisting, that I am happy that I've created an environment where I have a supply chain that will act responsibly in terms of recruiting individuals. Um, across Crossrail. I have a, a planned audit program that again is responsible to check out around those actions uh, and I have uh, the assurances from each of my CEOs that this is not happening. Right, well, uh, you, you, you know very well that there's a lot of people watching, uh, watching yourselves on this front and it's very, very important that Crossrail manage this um, um, in, in, in a, a, a amenable way. Um, Murad, can, can, I stop, 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 can we in writing after this yeah. meeting, you could clarify the point that Murad's mm. made, which is in your submission, where yeah. you state no allegations yeah. have, however, been made mm. about blacklisting by contractors working on the Crossrail mm. project. And tell you said something different. So perhaps in writing after, you could just clarify that for us. Sorry, Murad. Yes, I mean, Terry, if you could, that would be very uh, useful, Chair. Um, I've just lost my train of thought now. Um, I think we've, uh, well, as you know, there's been a lot of adverse publicity on this. It's gone to the floor of the, the House of Commons as well as here at the Assembly. Um, <coughs> I do think uh, Crossrail has got a responsibility with this huge publicly invested venture uh, to, to, to make sure uh, that workers' rights are protected in this, uh, this front, particularly with this uh, practice which goes back to, harking back to uh, a previous time. <coughs> Can I now move on to uh, supporting local labour? which uh, is another area which has drawn attention uh, locally. Uh, again, if I quote your written evidence, uh, you tell us that London Bank businesses have won approximately one-third of the business opportunities let, let by Crossrail, and 58% uh, of contracts have been awarded to small, medium-sized enterprises. Um, can I ask that uh, you publish the details of all the companies that have been awarded any contracts and the breakdown of their sizes? Um, that would be, I think, more conducive. Uh, we have been given some figures, uh, particularly constituent assembly members, of the, the number of contracts let, but I, I think that we need a, a different level of information. Can I at least ask that from yourselves from today's meeting? Terry? Yes. yes. I mean, we, 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 as you, I think I said, we said last year when we came here, we, we're measuring where all our contracts are, where they're going, because Whilst we're in London, I'm very consciously aware that uh, there's an interest in maximising value to London, but equally on the other side of the equation, we get lots of questions about why does London seem to get advantage uh, in terms of these large construction projects. And our answer has always been, with London being the powerhouse of the UK economy, there's always going to be a beneficial effect that actually happens on the basis of cross-rail across the whole of the UK. And we still remain very uh, 
pleased with the level of UK content that we are reporting, which is over 90 <coughs> percent, almost 95 percent of our added value work is coming from the UK, and we do measure it in the way that you just described, and we do keep look we keep looking at where the dispersal of those contracts are being let. Um, uh, the only caveat I attach to this is that there is a sensitivity around uh, – we, we obviously, when we place a contract, uh, we publicise the value of the contract, but we don't do much more than that because, quite clearly, um, there's commercially sensitive material inside that, and I'm certainly not going to provide information that our supply chain might decide they want to take advantage of. So we will do the very best we can to match what you're talking about, but there will be some clarifications yes. in there for us in terms of – protecting our commercial content. Well, Terry, I'm sure you will understand we're looking out for Greater London yeah, as a understand. huge constituency. Um, and I've looked at some of the preliminary figures that we've seen. And, for example, in the City of Westminster, there seems to be 141 contracts let. Uh, if we had the names and the, and the postcodes, we can at least check up if it's just the mailing box and, and a name plaque or more than that. I, I know one or two contractors locally around Paddington on rail, uh, provide rail uh, um, uh, manual labour and don't seem to be having a look in. Uh, so that's, that, that's, that's what we want to see. It doesn't yeah. seem to be happening. Can but I if we get the figures to how one can resolve that, I mean, I think that if you just go back for a moment, um, £5.5 billion pounds worth of procurement so far, um, around 100 first tier contracts. So you must understand the structure of what we do. Those are competitively bid contracts. There is um, an element of quality, there's an element of commercial value for money in order to provide um, for the winner of those contracts. We then in those contracts specify that Compete for, which is a very constructive um, tool, a piece of software that actually gives access and transparency to all the following contracts that flow down from that first year supply. Now, what we're trying to do here is to give access, to give transparency, to give opportunity to the smaller, medium-sized organisations, both in London and the South East and for the rest of UK. Those contracts are contracts with our first-tier suppliers. Having been awarded on a first-tier competitive bid, we have access to information that will provide us with the knowledge and the certainty that we are spreading the business opportunities, both in London and the South East and around the UK. It has not been designed to be able to get some of the information that you want. It was never designed to do that. But what we will do, as the Chairman says, is to, is to be able to mine the information that we have had, keeping the commercial confidentiality, um, in the, respecting the commercial confidentiality, but to be able to give us the sense that when you do invest in public sector programmes like this, that we can be sure that there is, one, the fair chance, the transparency, the opportunity for small businesses to get it, and secondly, <coughs> the best intelligence. And no other you know, public sector programme so far has the intelligence that we've got right now. Not even the ODA had this sort of intelligence, and we're very pleased to be able to report 75,000 business opportunities, 58% um, of that going to small, medium-sized organisations. And the intelligence that we have, I think, is very, very useful. So, yes, as far as we can. We didn't design the system, perhaps, to be able to do some of the things you wanted. I think the output of what we're getting is going to be very important for future public sector programmes and to indicate where that work is going within Greater and Central London. All, all I'll do in response, Andrew, is to say that the subcontractors I see locally don't seem to be getting a look in. I just want to be sure that supply chain is uh, allowing them to tender for these contracts, and I think knowing where these contracts so are... So three things I invite them to do. One is, is to register as part of Compete4. They've done all this. Secondly, to go on to the Crossrail website, uh, and thirdly, to talk to their trade associations. I am going in the next few weeks to talk to another meets the buyer presentation um, to try and get speed dating between small local firms, introduce their first and second suppliers to give them opportunity. It doesn't guarantee them work. What it does do is, is, is define what the pipeline of opportunity for them is and how they can successfully put that application forward. Okay. And finally, if, if, if uh, in that package of information, uh, any information available on subcontractors from your Tier 1 contractors would be useful. Uh, names and postcodes would be suffice, I think, for the purposes of this exercise. Thank mm -hmm. you.